Welcome, this is Mr. Berger, and in this video we're going to go over the essential understandings that you need to use a compound light microscope efficiently and effectively. The first thing you want to notice is that the word compound means that there's actually two lenses. There's an objective lens, which magnifies the image once, and then there's the eyepiece lens, which magnifies the image the second time. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is just a tool. The microscope is a tool which allows humans to see microscopic objects that are not visible to the unaided eye. I kind of have a lame little screwdriver as my example of a tool. I should have like a big chainsaw so I'm but I don't. So keep in mind that it's a compound light microscope. It's the image is actually being magnified twice. The next thing you want to understand is, so how do you calculate the total magnification of a compound light microscope? So total magnification equals the objective lens times the eyepiece magnifying power. So you multiply them together because they're being, um, the image is being compounded twice. So let's look at what the total magnification under the low power objective would be 4 times 10, and that would give you a total magnification of 40x. If you're looking under the medium magnification, that means that it would be 10 power for the objective times 10 for the eyepiece, and that would give you a total magnification of 100x. If you're looking at the high power objective, you have a 40x magnification power on the high power objective, plus 10 uh, power for the eyepiece. You multiply those together, and you get 400x for the total magnification. The next thing that we want to understand in order to be PMU is that the image flips twice because there's two lenses and because of the optics, the actual image is flipped when it's being magnified by the optic in the lens. So we take this quick example. If you have FDR and if you're looking at the slide and it says FDR and then you look through the eyepiece of the microscope, the actual image that you will see will look like this. It will have flipped upside down and then flipped again so it'll appear backwards. So it appears upside down and backwards. So remember that. The next thing to understand is how the actual image moves. When you move the slide on the stage, how does the image move in the field of view? And the thing to remember is that the image moves in the opposite direction from how you move the slide on the stage. So if you move the slide up, the actual image moves down in the field of view. If you move the slide down on the stage, the image moves up in the field of view. And it's actually opposite, so it's like the microscope dance, okay? You opposite, it's moving opposite, okay? So this example is a quick example here. We have a paramecium here at the edge of the field of view. If we want to move that paramecium towards the center of the field of view, you would actually have to move the slide towards A on the stage in order to get the image to move towards the center of the field of view here. Now, the reason that you want to be able to move things around is because it's very important to center the specimen before you switch to a higher objective power lens. That's because when you change and increase the magnification power of the microscope, you actually shrink the field of view. So you have the largest field of view under low power, then it shrinks when you go to medium, and then it shrinks again when you go to high power. Um, so if, you, if we use our paramecium example here, we've got the paramecium on the edge of the low power field of view. When you switch to medium power, it'll look like the paramecium disappeared. But it's not a magic trick. It's because you forgot to center the specimen before you changed the objective power. So it's easy enough to fix. You just go back down to the lower power. You move the specimen to the center of the field of view. And then you move back to the medium objective or the higher objective. Another thing you need to keep in mind is light intensity. It's a compound light microscope. The image is formed by the light passing through the specimen and then being magnified by the lenses. So you always want to be checking and adjusting the diaphragm, which is underneath the stage, to see how much light is passing through the specimen. 
because if there's too much light, it could be washed out. If there's too little light, the image may be too dark. The other reason is because as you increase the magnifying power from low to medium to high power objectives, the actual amount of light decreases. Um, so a lot of times you need to adjust the light intensity in the diaphragm in order to get the best image. So you need to be aware of light intensity if you're going to be a professional microscope user. So it all basically comes down to knowing your microscope, know your tool, okay? Know how to use the tool effectively and efficiently in order to be a professional microscope user. I hope that was helpful.